Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com and to my fourth video on Raspberry Pi Robotics. Last time I mounted a Pi Zero on the Sumo robot and controlled it using a wireless keyboard. This time, and in response to several requests, I'm going to go further and I'm going to control the robot over a network using first a laptop and then an Android tablet. So, here we have my Raspberry Pi Zero Zumo robot, pretty much as you saw it at the end of my last Raspberry Pi Robotics video. And as you might recall, I've got it running off this uh, Rai wireless keyboard. The dongle for the Rai is uh, up here, look. And uh, if I use the Rai, I can drive it forward, drive it backwards, and I can spin it and spin it again, and have endless hours of fun driving this thing around from the Rai keyboard. And if you remember, the way this works is I'd written some Python code and I'd use a module called Curses, which reads the keystrokes being entered via a terminal window. So to make this work, what we had to do is once we got the code all written, we just opened up a terminal window, a console, and we navigated to the right directory where I'd actually stored my Python code, which I called Python code. And then we executed that code. And then as we just saw, we could then run the robot like this perfectly happily and uh, have hours of fun doing that. And as you've seen here, of course, we disconnected the video lead to make it completely independent. Now, the nice thing is, if we want to do this running not from a Rai keyboard, but by controlling this from another computer, we don't have to change any of the code on the Pi. All we have to do is to find a means of opening up a console, a terminal window on another computer that controls the Pi rather than directly on the Pi itself. And we can do that using something called SSH. Now, to make this work, we need to do a few things with the Pi. First of all, this Pi needs to be online. And this is a Pi Zero, which hasn't got Wi-Fi built in, so we need to give it some Wi-Fi. So what I'm gonna do is to take this thing, which is a uh, Broadcom wireless um, dongle and, U and uh, USB hub, jolly useful device. So I'll take out the right thing from there, and I'll drop this into here, and drop that into there. And I would say I've already plugged this into the Pi before and set up the password, so it'll automatically go online with this now. And I'll also now plug in the video lead so you can see what I'm doing in terms of setting this thing up. So here we are back on the Pi desktop, and I'll press Q on my keyboard to come out of the code. We left ourselves an out point in that code, always wise to do that. And now I want to ask the Raspberry Pi what its IP address is. It's addressed on the network we can use to access it from other computers. And to do that, I simply have to type in a terminal, which I happen to be in already, ifconfig. Config, can't type too fast on the uh, right, never mind, we'll do that. And there we are, it gives us all the information we need. And you can see in the second block there under the wireless LAN zero block, the second line down shows us the Pi's IP address, which as you can see is 192.168.0.100. Now, I should just mention you can also get the IP address by floating your mouse cursor over the Wi-Fi icon when it's connected, and you'll see there again we've got 192.168.0.100, but I will actually need some other information from the screen I've just brought up later in the video, so I thought I'd show you both methods. Right, I'm going to be accessing our Pi from my friendly netbook, my Acer Aspire 1725, and to do that, I've gone to the web, gone into Chrome here, and I've gone to the website putty.org. And putty is a small utility you can use for SSH to control to access other computers. And as you can see, we can download putty here, so I'll click on that link. And uh, we can install full ins installation packages, but actually, I know all we need is that one file, putty.exe. So I'll just download that, and we'll stick into that folder I've already set up for that. That's good. It won't take a second. It's only 519 kilobytes, tiny little file. And if I now go down here, oh look, on my desktop, I'm all ready for you. And if I just run putty.exe, you don't have to install anything, we'll run that up. Uh, do we want to run it? Yes, we do. Don't worry about that. And it's come up. And we can now enter in here the IP address of our Pi, which as you might remember was 192.168.0.1. Hundred, And if we now open that up, it'll hopefully work, and it has. Oh look, we are now effectively on our Pi desktop, but from another computer. We want to log in as Pi, that's the default username, and the default password, as you hopefully know, is Raspberry. 
And uh, yes, we're in. We're now into our pi over SSH. And if I do a directory, you'll see there we are. We can see all the stuff on the pi. And if I change to uh, Python code and DIR, that's where we were before. And if I now type Python and um, key underscore robot pi, we should find that we are accessing the pi. And if I therefore hit my cursor keys, as you might be able to hear, the robot is alive. Amazing. If we just flick to uh, see all that in practice, here we are, and again you can see if I go, uh, I'm working upside down here, it's very difficult. Backwards and forwards, and we can spin it. It's, I can't see what I'm doing, but never mind, you can see what I'm doing. And the principle is, we can actually run our robot, if I can figure out how these curs cursor keys work upside down, back to front. Help, it's all going horribly wrong. I want to spin, there we are, spin, and forwards, and there we are, and I think from there, I will stop. But there we are, we've proved a principle. We can control our Pi robot. Oh yes, we can, Robert, we can control you using another computer. Now, you might think this is all marvellous, and it is, oh dear, it's gone out of the way. Come back, come back, come back, come back. You might think it's all marvellous. There's one thing, though, you do need to know about, because the Pi is working from a dynamically assigned IP address at the moment, which means that if we turn the Pi off and turn this on again, it wouldn't be on the same IP address. And clearly, that's not very helpful. We couldn't access it directly over SSH without knowing that IP address, so I need to explain how the Pi can be given a fixed and always known IP address. Most home and small business networks are based around a router that has a fixed public IP address. However, because each computer that uses a network requires a unique IP address, the router uses a protocol called DHCP to automatically assign a private or local IP address to each device. So, returning to our previous situation with our PiZumo robot, while it may now be assigned the private address 192.168.0.100, if we turn it off, a laptop may connect to a network and be assigned that free address. So, next time the Pi connects, it could be assigned 192.168.0.101 or 192.168.0.67 or whatever the router decides. We could overcome our problem by asking the Pi what IP address it's been assigned every time we connect it. Another solution is to program the Pi to always ask for a specific IP address. While many people recommend this, this method does not always work as it can't prevent another device taking that IP address first. The best solution is therefore to program our router to always assign the same IP address to the Pi. Exactly how this is done depends on your router, but I can show you the principle using my own Netgear hardware. Here, I've gone to the router's web control page, which in this case is located at 192.168.0.1, and I've navigated to LAN IP setup. As we can see, DHCP is currently set to assign IP addresses in the range 192.168.0.2 to 192.168.0.254, although the address 192.168.0.2 has been reserved for a particular PC. To make a second IP address reservation for our Pi robot, I need to click on Add, and then I need to enter the IP address I want to use, as well as the Pi's MAC address and device name. I'm going to reserve the IP address 192.168.0.100, partially because we've got used to using it, but mainly because it's a good distance up the pool range, starting at 192.168.0.2. Next, we need the Pi's MAC address. This is its unique hardware identifier, its name if you like, and it's shown on the Pi's IF config screen, as we saw earlier whereas you can see it's listed under hardware address on the first line, just above the IP address, with the value starting 0090. Finally, my Pi's device name is Pi Zero Zumo, which I set up earlier on the Pi by accessing the menu and selecting preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration, and then entering a name I wanted to use. With all of this information now entered into my router's control page, I just need to click on Add, and the Pi Zero Zumo has its very own IP address reservation. 
As I said earlier, your own router's control page is unlikely to look the same as mine, but the principle of making IP reservations will be exactly the same. So, just to prove everything is working as intended to demonstrate the possibilities here, I've now got my netbook back ready to go into Putty to log on to the Pi, and the Pi Little Pi robot is completely turned off. So I'll turn it on using the button on the uh, USB power bank that powers it. Remember, all of this was explained in a previous video. That's now hopefully turned itself on. No, it hasn't. I got it wrong. Let's do it correctly. There we are. It's now powering up. That's good. And we've got a little light flickering on the back of the Pi. You may or may not be able to see that. You probably can't, but I can see a little light flickering. And so we'll let that flicker away. And in theory, we're turning on a Pi from cold, not connected to anything else. It's got a fixed IP because we've set it on the router. So I should be able to boot the thing up, go into Putty on here, drive it around a little bit, and also shut it down. So that shows you the whole process of having a completely independent piece of hardware, which we can turn on, log into, do something with, turn it off again. And SSH, as you probably gathered, is a really useful utility for more things than simply controlling Pi robots, controlling any computer remotely over the web. It, it's really very useful indeed. Anyway, I've hopefully witted along enough now to actually allow myself to get in, so I will turn this round. I want to do this as a complete take so you can tell it's not being faked, as it were. So I'll open that up, and um, it's found me login to Pi, so I'll log in as Pi. Just imagine what I'm typing here, and rasp, raspberry, and uh, I then need to go to uh, CD Python code, and I can now type Python, and uh, what is it? Key robot pi, is that correct? It is. So this is now live, and so in theory, I can flick the switch on here to turn the, uh, the motors and things on, and if I'm right, yes, it worked. I'm probably just as happy as you were that actually worked. Yay, it's working all the way around. Isn't this marvelous? And we'll stop it there. Dear me, almost stopped it in the wrong place. Bring it forward again. There we are. You might remember I've got a control system here. I have to press a key to stop it. We'll probably change that in a future video, but for now, it works fine. Anyway, we've proved that works. I'll now show you how to shut down. I'll just come back over here. There's two commands you could use to shut down. First of all, we'll have to press Q on the keyboard to come out of our code we've already got here. And then we can just type in a command to shut it down, which could either be sudo power off, sudo to make sure it's done in root mode, so it actually worked to turn it off. Power off will turn it off but also you could use sudo shutdown minus h now. But I'll click on the power off thing there, and the Pi will now shut down. And on my screen here, if you could see that it says server unexpectedly closed network connection. Well, of course it did, because uh, we've shut down the computer it was connected to. Anyway, I'll also flick off the batteries on the Pi, and now we've proved we've got a, a working robot we can access remotely over SSH. Right, as a final experiment, I'm going to try and control the Pi, the Zumo robot, from an Android tablet. And so here I am in the Play Store, and I'm going to install an application, a free application called Juice SSH. So I'll press to install that, and uh, we'll accept that lot because we always have to, and hopefully that will install. Um, you can see the robot is sitting there waiting to be controlled. Hopefully it's on, but uh, we'll see what happens. And the application is installing, looks to be doing OK. I haven't tried this previously, so we'll hope it's going to work. But uh, nearly there. It would be great if we could control the robot from Android as well, wouldn't it? There we are, look, and open. And see what this looks like. There we are. And uh, what do we do? Manage your connections. I suppose we go to uh, connections, I guess. And add a connection. And we'll give it a nickname of a Pi. Zumo, why not? And we'll give it an address of uh, 192.168.0.100. We all know that by now, and I think that's probably all we need. Do you think that'll work? Might do. We must select an identity. All right, select one. Obviously, it has to be new. And there we are. Nickname is going to be a... Uh, we'll put in pi zero. Zumo again, username is going to be um, pi, and the uh, password 
is going to be, I would imagine, Rasp. Very OK. And hopefully now that is all good. And good. There we are. So Pi Zumo is there, connecting. Looks like the first time we've connected it is. Do we want to accept the key? We will accept. That is cool. And there we are. Um, OK, I've got it. There we are. Rather small on the screen there, but I can see my um, on-screen keyboard. So see if this will work. Can I, uh, if I do a DIR, we can, yes, I seem to be in. So I, in theory, could go to uh, CD, Python, and where's my underscore on this keyboard? There it is. Code, I'll just whiz through this bit for you. And there we are, that's in. If I press enter on that, that seems to have worked. So if I try turning on the robot, this is a very interesting experiment and yes, we are controlling the robot from the Android tablet. That is extraordinary, isn't that amazing? Yay, the wonders of modern technology. And I think with that, because I'm in danger of driving in exactly the wrong place and driving off, off, the, off the table here, because I can't see it, I think with that, we'll call that a day and prove that we've done some very exciting things with SSH with our Raspberry Pi robot. Controlling the Zumo robot using SSH over a network opens up all kinds of possibilities. However, in my next Raspberry Pi Robotics video, I'm going to go in a totally different direction. I'm going to use this space I've left on the front of the robot to mount some photo sensors so it can function independently as a line follower. But now that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.